Well, keeping things going here, the S&P 500 coming off of its worst year, worst starts to the year, excuse me, since 2016 after a pair of downgrades on Apple. Spooked investors and another cautious note out on the tech giants this morning could put more pressure on the broader markets here. Jeffries warns that Apple's sales slump in China is getting worse with a further decline in volumes likely this year. So does this spell more trouble for the tech sector? We want to bring in John Stolzfus, who is the Oppenheimer Chief Investment Strategist. John, great to see you here this morning. So what does the, the rough start for tech spell out for perhaps the first quarter at least, and especially considering some of the gains that we had come off of last year? Well, Brad, thanks for having me on the uh, on the show. First of all, uh, we've got to say when we look at this, uh, we think the overall effect on the market has been one of uh, some profit taking amongst the uh, magnificent seven, some concerns related to some names within there. Uh, and we'll, we think it'll get ironed out somewhat uh, in third quarter, uh, I'm sorry, fourth quarter uh, earnings season, which it really get, gets kicked off this week when the big banks start up. But in addition to that, we've seen uh, rotation rebalancing uh, among the sectors, among style, uh, as well as market capitalizations. And overall, you know, a repricing of the thought about when the Fed is going to uh, uh, begin cutting. So what affects one company's stock here is not really, we think, that where the market goes. We've got to think uh, what we have to define to separate the, the noise uh, uh, from the signal and consider what is idiosyncratic and what is systemic. Well, John, taking that under consideration here and your expectations for earnings growth, looking ahead not only to the upcoming quarter when we'll get fourth quarter results, but ahead here to the rest of 2024, do you think earnings season is going to be enough to kind of turn around this momentum that we saw to the downside to start the year? Oh, uh, you know, we, we think it, 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 uh, thir as we look at the, the fourth quarter earnings season uh, across the transom, we think we'll see enough surprises that are positive to offset uh, uh, concerns in certain areas, uh, a weakness, whether it uh, is on tough comps, uh, whether it is uh, at, uh, issues that are tied to uh, global growth or domestic growth, and, and the, the considerations uh, by uh, various strategy groups and uh, hedge fund groups within the market. Uh, so we look at it, if anything, the journal over the weekend, uh, as I recall, uh, said that uh, based on what they were seeing from facts that uh, growth is now expected to be around 1.3 percent earnings growth that would be down from around four in, in the third quarter uh, but remember going into these uh, earnings seasons analysts have been relatively conservative overall and the sense of the market has always been very negative going in so open to positive surprises and we think the economy is bigger than the than the bare uh, a negative pitch book here. Does does that mean traders should be embracing in some cases, but also prepared for some of those more volatile shocks post earnings? Oh, uh, Brad, absolutely. Volatility is part and parcel uh, of the markets and, and uncertainty. I, you know, as I, as you know, I've been doing this. Uh, I've been involved in the market since 1983, so I've been through every boom, bust, and recovery cycle uh, in the process. And what we've got to say when we look at it is, is things have to get digested. Uh, it's not uncommon after a remarkably powerful run from the end of last October through the end of the year uh, that uh, markets probably got ahead of themselves. And we were looking from that uh, October 27th low of last, of last year for about uh, six, seven percent upside. And it was instead, it was, I think, about 14, 15 percent upside. Uh, and a lot of that was based on expectations or bets, rather, uh, by uh, market players that the Fed was going to cut, uh, what, five or six times this year. We don't think that's likely. Inflation remains too sticky. Jerome Powell does not want to be I, does no one have to become Paul Volcker and take draconian efforts against inflation, nor does he want to be Arthur Burns, uh, who was the predecessor of, of Volcker, uh, who missed uh, the ability to fight inflation. So we think the Fed remains on guard, but still remains very sensitive. And as a result of that, you know, things aren't as aren't as bad as they may look in the moment. Uh, it looked like a haircut to us more than. Uh, a real uh, than a stock route based on where stocks had run.
So, John, for investors out there, for our viewers who want to take action on all this, they're trying to figure out what's the best way to position their portfolio. What's some of the adjustments that they should be making today? Uh, Shana, I think the, the big the big adjustment is is to take a look at what you own, know what you own, why you own it, have realistic uh, and right-sized expectations of how different sectors, market capitalizations, and style positions will perform. Balance that against uh, where your uh, goals and objectives are, as well as your tolerances risk. And in that, if you are if you are able to take market volatility, uh, you know uh, the advantage of when 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 some stocks that were too expensive for you last uh, quarter suddenly look cheaper in here because they're babies that get thrown out with the bathwater. There's an opportunity to add positions. We don't suggest just blindly buying the dips, but rather look for those babies that get thrown out with the bathwater. And in the case of ETF, sometimes they actually throw uh, sectors or thematics out with the bathwater. So it's a good idea to keep alert. John, just quickly while we have you, when you think about the areas that are perhaps most prone to profit taking ahead of a, a hard Fed pivot or announcement of any, side, any sort of cut coming forward, what would those sectors be? I think right now, you know, based on the performance of, of technology and communication services, which as I recall, were both up around 50% last year, consumer discretionary was up powerfully as well. Uh, I think those would likely be areas that, that would be uh, prone to seeing selling. Uh, but I think when you look at that, you've really got to consider the, the effects of, uh, of, of, of the Fed's actions based on economic data, which shows they've made remarkable progress on inflation while being very sensitive to the effects of practicing their mandate uh, 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 on the economy. Of course, their mandate basically being to strive for stable economic growth and uh, low unemployment, or what they say is full unemployment, which is basically somewhere between three and 4% unemployment. All right, John, always great to get your insight here again. Uh, target for the S&P, you're in target of 5,200 by the end of 2024. John, great to have you. Look forward to talking with you again soon. Thanks.